What's up guys, this is Adam with TAT Express and in this video I'm going to discuss with you what we found on a teardown with a 60 series. Now this is a 98 model pre-emissions. I know you guys are a big fan of this engine so I'm going to show you what we found during the teardown. Guys, this is an educational video so if you like this type of content be sure to like, subscribe and turn on notifications so you're notified when we go live or when we release a new video. Guys, we are open at our new location, 4140 Langdon Road, Dallas, Texas, 75241. If you'd like to schedule an appointment, you can call us at 972-225-3017. TAT Express is also hiring, so if you feel like you can bring value to our team as a technician or a service writer, you can apply online on our careers page or give us a call, 972-225-3017. Let's get right into this video. Okay guys, as I mentioned, this is a 98 model pre-emission 60 series. I know you guys are a big fan of this engine. We got it tore down. Uh, I wanna point out a few things. When you do come across an engine like this, if you are able to buy something like this, it's not a bad engine. The only thing I would advise is check out for uh, the erosion. There's a lot of erosion that's going on in this engine. We have it tore down. I'm gonna show you some of the parts, some of the wear that we found. On this particular block, we're gonna have to get it counterboard. We're gonna have to get it machined because of the erosion. I'm gonna give you some closer views on it, but I also wanna show you some of the sleeves, some of the liners, what we found on the liners and what we found on the mains. So this is a good engine, it's not a bad engine, it's just tough to find one that's not wore down and it doesn't have tons of erosion. This has probably been maybe the second or third time this engine's been, re been rebuilt. And the only reason why I say that is because we're able to notice that they're not original parts. So let's move over here to the table. The first thing I wanna cover with you is the liners. So let's move over here to the table and check out these liners. Okay guys, so here we are at the table. We have the liners, we have the pistons. The first thing I wanna cover with you is the liners. Now, one thing we've seen here on the liners, and this is pretty often on these 60 series that have high mileage, is you have a lot of erosion. You can see how much erosion's happening on these, on these seals here. Now these seals is what surrounds the liner and keeps the, the coolant from dropping into the crankcase. This is considered a wet liner because it's surrounded by water and it also can be pulled out and replaced without having to remove the complete engine. As you can see, we have a lot of erosion. You can see the pitting here. You got more pitting here, all the way down the side of the liner. You can see all the erosion that's happening on these seals. Now we're gonna end up putting sleeves and doing a counterbores, re-counterboring the, 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 the actual block so that we can get a decent seal on this. Uh, as I mentioned, we don't believe this is the first overhaul that this engine has had. One thing that we've noticed, and I'll show you the difference here. We have one liner here, and as you can see the top of the liner, you can see it has these ridges. Now, this is, there's a big difference between the li this liner and the other liners. As you can see, this one has double ridges, also full of erosion, you can see all this. this. The seals aren't as bad. You can see these seals are still intact, but you still have pitting around the sleeve. And inside the sleeve, whenever you're checking the liners, you wanna check to make sure that you have original cross hatches. And that's how they look when they're brand new. You have cross hatches, but on this particular liner, you have light scuffing. We have light scuffing on the liner, which is gonna cause blow by and definitely cause uh, low power. You're gonna have different types of problems with uh, oil consumption. Here's liner number one. If you look at the top of the liner, this just only has one groove. The other one had two grooves, so it's completely different. This particular seal is almost completely gone. You can see how much erosion that is, all this erosion that's on the sleeve. Now, as I mentioned, these aren't bad engines. These are really good engines. 60 series are very solid, durable engines. The only thing that you're gonna come across is how much erosion you're gonna be finding. And not only that, this is a 98 model pre-emission, so not only is the engine have to be rebuilt correctly and maintained, but also the chassis, as I mentioned in other videos. But this is something that we found here. Whenever you do get an overhaul on these particular engines that have a lot of erosion, it's very important to have the block machine, everything to specs before putting new parts in because you don't wanna just put new parts in and you have erosion on the block. It could last you maybe a few months, maybe a year and end up having the same problem. Another thing is the reason why we like to machine our, our blocks is to keep the, the sleeves very tight. 
Over time, what happens is the, the liner, the, the counter bores get kind of waddled out. So if you don't get them lined, if you don't keep them within specs, then that piston, that piston, when it's going up and down and that liner could be moving over time, it's gonna waddle out. It's gonna be hitting the sides. It's gonna cause more damage on the liner and you're not gonna get your million miles on your 60 series. The next thing I wanna discuss is the pistons. So let's check these pistons out. Okay guys, so the next thing we're gonna be looking at are the pistons. Now, one thing I wanna highlight to you is these do not look like original parts as I mentioned before. I'm not sure if this, uh, this truck has been overhauled just recently. I'm not sure how many miles are on this, but you can tell just the difference in the pistons here. You can tell the difference between the colors. These are a lighter color compared to a darker color. Also, you can see the bolts, the, the rod that bolts here to the piston. You can see that there are different colors as well. Whenever you're replacing these particular components, you wanna inspect them. One thing I wanna show you here on this particular piston, if you, if you check the skirt out, you can see that you have some scars here on the skirt. Now that's not normal. This is an older model piston, which is a two-piece piston. The skirt is separate from the dome, and then you have the wrist pin that actually the rod bolts to. All these components need to be replaced. You wanna replace these bolts, replace these as well because they can get stretched out from previous rebuilds. And if they're stretched out, you might not get a good torque. These bolts can actually come loose and you have a rod coming out the block. Another thing I'd like to mention here is these mains, you can see how you got some scars on these mains, on these rod, these rod bearings here. Now that just shows that it could be a little bit of dirty oil. I'm not sure during a build or not, but definitely whenever you're doing a build, you wanna make sure you're in a clean, closed environment. You don't wanna to get too much debris inside the engine, especially on a new rebuild, because you're gonna get a lot of scarring on the mains pretty quickly. Now, as I mentioned, these pistons are not the same. This is a lighter dome. Could be a, uh, I see, I see a, a aftermarket number here. So this is definitely an aftermarket piston. Whenever you're replacing these, I would suggest going with the original parts, replacing bolts as I mentioned. This piston as well is uh, completely different from the other one. And the color wise, it's not original. It's not an original piston here. So I can see Detroit numbers. I can see other FP numbers. So these are different, different style pistons. So as I mentioned, these are items that you wanna look for when you're breaking down and also replace these bolts, replace the bolts going into the pistons. The, the rings look pretty good. Here's another piston here. You can see we got some, some more scars here on the pistons. The rings look good. They're kind of bouncing around. We got one missing. One thing I did notice is we have a lot of moisture on the top of the domes, which kind of indicates that you don't have some good injectors firing. So anytime you do a, an overhaul like this and you have original injectors that have over a million miles, it is recommended that you go with a new set of injectors. Now, another thing I'd like to mention is sometimes you can get some bad injectors. A lot of these injectors are remands, so sometimes you can get a set of old injectors or not really good injectors, so it's gonna take some time maybe checking those out. Uh, another thing I wanna mention to you here is you can look at these caps. Make sure not to mix any of these up, but you can see this cap fairly clean, but you do have some light scratches, and that could just be debris in the oil. I'm not sure how many miles are on this particular engine, but anytime you do a rebuild, it's very, very important to be in a clean environment, closed environment. You don't want to get any dirt inside the engine. The next thing I want to discuss with you is the head. So let's move over to the cylinder head. I want to show you a couple of things on that. So let's go, let's take a look at this cylinder head. Okay guys, now we're gonna take a look at the cylinder head. As I mentioned before, these aren't original parts and one indicator as you can see is if the head has been painted or if it's not original color as a block, if it doesn't look like the same condition as the block, those are indicators that it has been, has been replaced. Other indicators are silicone, you have red silicone. Red silicone is actually not used by the, by the manufacturers, so that's another indicator there. One thing I'd like to mention, if you're gonna be doing an overhaul, I know some shops like to reman these. We've been doing overhauls for a very long time and I, I would suggest to go ahead and replace it with original head. If you can find one here at your local dealer, it's a good job to get, get another head. And the reason why is we used to send them out and get a machine, but we've had engines come back with bad heads and the amount of work it takes to tear these engines down again to replace that head, honestly, it's just best to replace the head and not try to chance it and get it rebuilt. 
Sometimes the, the machine shops are backed up as well, so you may be waiting a couple of weeks just to get the engine re, or the head rebuilt, and not all the time it's gonna be 100%. If you get a, an, a head, a cylinder head from Detroit, now that's already warranted. It's warranted through the dealer. Also, we warranty them here at our shop. So it's just best to get the head replaced. Uh, another thing I'd like to mention is whenever you're replacing the head, you're, of course, you're gonna be checking the, the, uh, the cam. The cam, this is an overhead cam on this particular model. And you can see some of the main bearing or some of the cam bearings here. You can see this cam bearing here. You can see the scuffing. Now, when you're checking these bearings, most of the time you just wanna have, this bearing is gonna be mostly original. So you don't wanna have too much scarring, but you can see scarring, you can see the copper. There's a lot of metal starting to miss from these bearings. Now, if you guys are doing cold starts, which is starting your truck up in the morning, let that truck warm up. You know, if you, if, especially during the cold weather. You don't want to start the truck up and just run it, gas it, or you, want, you don't want to rev it up so that you can build your air pressure. Let that engine warm up, let the oil make it up there, and make sure you're keeping up with your oil changes. You don't want to run high mileage on regular oil, or just high mileage period, because you're going to be tearing that oil down, and then when you have these startups, this is what's going to happen. You're going to have what's considered cold starts. You're starving the, starving the cam with oil, and this is what ends up happening. You starve it from oil, you can have these dry starts like this, it starts scarring up. It may not happen right away, but over time, that's what you're gonna end up seeing. So every time we do an overhaul, we always recommend replacing the head with another, with another OEM head. Don't try to get it rebuilt, don't try to use the same head, just because you don't wanna to have to tear this engine down again after a rebuild, it's a lot of work. So the next thing I wanna to talk to you about is the block. We're gonna move back over to the truck and I wanna show you some erosion on the block. And as I mentioned, we're gonna get this machine, but we're actually gonna get it machined in the truck so we don't have to pull the, whole, pull the whole block, send it off, wait on it. But I'm gonna show you the erosion on the block. Let's move over here to the block and uh, check it out. Okay guys, so we're back here at the block. I'm gonna give you some close-ups of what we see on the counterboards. Now, there's a lot of erosion on this particular block, especially where the O-rings, the seals on the liners are sealing the coolant to keep the coolant from dropping into the oil. There's a lot of erosion on there. We're gonna show you that. Other things I'd like to mention, when you're doing an overhaul, it's good practice to go ahead and replace the oil cooler. You wanna go ahead and replace the, the water pump if it, hasn't, if it hasn't been replaced, and also the oil pump. And the reason being is you don't wanna have an engine overheat after a rebuild. Anytime you have an engine overheat, especially if you replace the head, you're risking the chance of destroying the head and having issues with this engine. And I know a lot of people like to reuse parts and they wanna push it further, but if you wanna get that million miles out of that engine after a rebuild, it's just best practice to replace all the coolant, make sure everything's fine, all the coolant components and your oil, your lubricating components, especially the radiator. Uh, if you're looking at an engine like this or a truck like this, 98 model, the, the radiator is going to be pretty much shot. It's going to be corroded if you haven't replaced it before. This water pump does look like it's been replaced. As you can see, it's different. It's a different color from, from the engine, uh, from the original engine. So anytime you do replace a water pump, you want to go ahead and paint it and protect it because it will get erosion. These, all these hoses, any coolant hoses, this is original clamps. You don't want to reuse those clamps. You want to go with new hoses just to make sure you don't lose any coolant when you're running this truck because anytime, as I mentioned, you're running a truck, you just got to rebuild, fresh rebuild. You, what you don't want is a truck overheating and causing any issues before your million miles. Another good item to replace is going to be the bull gear. The bull gear is, is actually in the front of the, in front of the gear train, it's in front of the engine. Now what the bull gear does is keep, keep the crank time to the cam, it keeps all your timing correct. Now the reason why we recommend replacing it is because it it's actually has a bearing in the middle of it and if it's, original bear, if it's the original bull gear, it's best practice to replace that bull gear whenever you're doing an overhaul because if you have any play on that bull gear, you're risking the chance of the engine being out of time and you can destroy the engine before your million mile mark. It's just best practice to get that replaced, especially if you're past a million miles and you haven't replaced it before and you're putting this much money into a rebuild. It's just best to do all these components just to risk any, to avoid any risk of the engine not reaching a million miles. The last thing I wanna discuss is the cam. So we're gonna move back over to the table. I wanna show you the cam, just a couple items there. So let's move back over here to the table. Okay guys, so the last item we're gonna be talking about is the cam. 
Now the cam is a very crucial part here. You wanna check it out. You wanna check all the lobes. These cams actually run your intake, your actual injectors, and your, and your exhaust. Now the newer models, which are going over to high fuel pressure, are not using the cam to push the actual injector plunger down. This is all gonna be done with high pressure. Now these older models are still using the cam to push the injector plunger down to create that pressure. Now that's why it's very important to check the lobes and you wanna check all your rocker bolts, you wanna check all the bolts on there as I mentioned before. Now this is, the top, this is the top cam on one of the particular cam caps. Now you can see, as I mentioned before about the cold starts, you can see how much this particular cam shell, uh, bearing shell is actually wore out. Another thing I want to mention is this particular bolt, you have the bolt that bolts this cam cap down. This actually takes a specialty tool and you can see that the threads on that, on this actual head, you can see that it's all stripped out. Even the threads where you actually put the top nut to hold the rocker on is actually stripped. You can see how stripped out that is. This takes a specialty tool to take off. Not all shops are gonna purchase that. They're gonna try to take it off without buying the specialty tool and I don't recommend that. But this is why it's very important to check these parts out whenever you're reassembling or when you have it disassembled. Not all the time are the overhaul kits are gonna come with all the parts that you need, especially if you have a bolt that's bad or if you have bolts that are on your, on your, on your pistons, those need to be replaced. They can be stretched and you, what you don't want is to be reassembled with a bad bolt, a stretched bolt. That bolt can come loose during operation and bend the valve, cause some major problems. Usually it happens when you're under a load and you're running, so you're not gonna be able to stop that truck right away and it definitely can cause damage. That's why I suggest checking all these parts before reassemble, inspect your cam, make sure all your lobes are good. This particular cam seems okay whenever you're checking your, you're checking for wear, you wanna make sure you don't feel anything with your nail. If you don't feel anything with your nail and you see some light scuffs, you can send this off to get it polished. But if you don't feel anything with your nails, I feel some light grooves here on the nail, with my nail, it may be, have to be replaced. And the only reason why I suggest replacing, as I mentioned before, it takes a lot of work to rebuild these engines. It takes a lot of time and you don't want this happening or you don't wanna have low oil pressure before your million mile mark. So this is things why we recommend replacing these parts so that you can hit that million mile mark and not have low oil pressure. As I mentioned, these bolts, this bolt is, is bad. It needs to be replaced. Um, also, you wanna check your rockers, all your rockers. You wanna make sure all your rocker bolts are there. You wanna make sure all your adjustment bolts are good. Your adjustment bolts are gonna have a nut on the top of it. Sometimes operators are, you know, you get, you're getting your truck, you're getting your overhead done, your overhead valve adjustments done. Sometimes the guys will over torque it and cause issues up there with those, with those adjustment bolts. So you wanna inspect those adjustment bolts. And also on the adjustment bolts, there's a item that actually touches the top of the valve. You wanna make sure that's there. You don't wanna make sure, if it's wore out, go ahead and replace that adjustment bolt. Not all the parts are gonna be reusable, guys. You gotta understand, this is a 98 model. It's probably got over two million miles. This is probably its second or third overhaul. So not all the components are gonna be reusable. If you try to stretch it and reuse some of the components that are questionable, that is gonna be having a risk of not hitting that million mile mark on that fresh overhaul. Okay guys, so I hope this video was useful. I hope this information was useful. If you like this type of content, be sure to hit that like, subscribe, and turn on notifications so you're notified when we go live or we release a new video. If you'd like to schedule an appointment for an overhaul, you can call us at 972-225-3017. TAT Express is also hiring, so if you feel like you can bring value to our team as a technician or a service writer, be sure to apply on our careers page or you can call us at 972-225-3017. Guys, until next time, be safe. I came from the mud There's dirt on my